Hey guys, I'm gonna walk you through how I made the, uh, the synth motif that appears throughout the entire track of every word. This is actually how the track was originally conceived. And um, of course, once Carrie Leva came in and you know, wrote a top line and everything, that changes the track, that puts it into a different stratosphere of what kind of song this is. But previously to that, I'm gonna get into how I created just the main, the main hook. And it all started with a synth, which is a Moog Subsequent 37. And I had just bought it maybe two months before I did the track originally. And it, uh, it just opened up a lot of creative ideas and it was, I found it immediately inspiring, particularly the arpeggiator function. And that's what I'm gonna be showing. That's really what actually is the basis of the melodic motif. So I'm just gonna show you how I made this thing. And uh, you can probably do this on any synth or any synth that has an arpeggiator. Any, uh, I'm sure there are plenty of plugins that do that. I don't know, um, this is how I did it. But um, the only other thing you should be aware of is that there is a delay pedal actually in the chain and that is an even tied time factor and it has a setting on it called filter pong and I have it set to be a dotted eighth note um, basically left and right and then there's actually a filter in the delay line too. So I'm gonna play a C and when, you rele when I release it, you'll hear that there's this filtery delay trail. I'm sure there are plugins that do that. Um, I just don't know. And I love the Eventide stuff in general, as many of you know. And yeah, I just, again, I find hardware inspiring and I tend to create things a lot in this manner. So I'm just gonna break down how we make this synth patch. So we start with just a sawtooth wave. Simple, boring. But then let's add a second oscillator to it. And also set to be a saw and to tune it up a fifth. So you've heard that kind of sound before, right? Now let's add a sub oscillator and that's gonna give it really like a lot of girth on the bottom end of it. And that's a really integral part of the sound. Uh, you need that. So now let's take our filter down. Let's create a nice little pluck. So we're gonna start here. And I'm gonna increase the resonance a bit too. I like it right around number three on the settings. Same with the drive. Let's add the envelope. And I really like the drive just to kind of give the filter a little bit of uh, some analog voodoo, if you will. Gives it some nice crunch. You can definitely overdo it. I tend to find I like it right around here. So this is the basis of the sound right here. And the, the melodic part, I didn't write traditionally in the sense of, uh, I'm gonna play all these notes and see what I get. I, I was just playing around with chords. And so as opposed to kind of going or whatever, I held a complex chord and I let the arpeggiator kind of break it apart for me. And that is actually how I got the idea. So let's talk about the arpeggiator for a moment. If we turn it on, let's turn off the octave. Just an eighth note, really simple. So now, we definitely need the octave. That's really part of the sound of the motif. So you get this pulsating ding, 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 ding. And now I just have the pattern set to be playing um, all the notes I play going up the scale. I like this. Uh, I mean, there are plenty of other ways you can do it. Let's turn on the latch mode so I can hold the chord and then play with it. So let's take, say this chord, which is a C minor add 13. And then if I play with the pattern, I can change the direction of the notes. So that's kind of the idea of how I do a lot of it. And um, 
in the case of every word, this Moog has this function on the arpeggiator called invert. And uh, I'm just going off a guess right here, but I'm guessing what it does, it essentially takes your note input and then basically inverts the value. So if you did play something like C, D, E, G, it would, I'm assuming that it would take that C, D, E, G and the way it's gonna restructure it would be uh, G, E, D, C or something of that nature. Um, again, I'm guessing I don't have the manual in front of me and frankly, I never read it, but I believe that's what it is. So if we take the chord that I used in every word, which is a pretty complex chord, I'm gonna show you how the invert function actually brought me to the actual motif itself. So let's turn on the arpeggiator and the chords actually, it's, it takes a lot of fingers. <laughs> And now let's invert it. And that's the pattern from every word right there. So that's how the motif for every word was created. Like I said earlier, you can do this on probably any synth that has an arpeggiator, anything that's based on kind of like virtual analog thing or analog thing. I mean, this is analog, not virtual analog, but um, anything that is based on a kind of traditional synthesizer structure, you can probably create this pretty easily. Again, just the things to remember that are important. You really need that sub oscillator that gives you a lot of low end. The arpeggiator is gonna restructure everything. And uh, remember, tune that second oscillator into that fifth. You know, that's kind of like that dead mouse pluck thing that he did 10 years ago. And it's all based around just, um, it's a pretty simple patch, but you just rearrange the notes in a melodic way that kind of gives you a new idea that you never would have thought of. So that's the value of the arpeggiator. Um, if you haven't heard this track, it's out right now on Anjuna Beats. It features one of my best friends in the whole world, Carrie Leva. And it's, uh, it's a track we're both pretty proud of. I've been playing it out for quite a while now, and I'm very excited that it's out into the world for you to hear. So go check it out and go play with some synths. See ya.